Hey there, everybody. Good afternoon on this Friday afternoon. So, uh, as you can probably see, I'm broadcasting a bit later than I typically do on, uh, on a weekday. And that's because I stayed up so late last night broadcasting Scotch and Smoke Rings and uh, had a rough morning. So, uh, the day was uh, set against me, but I decided I still wanted to go live today. And I'll finish up my lore video tonight. But, that means we're going to have a shorter broadcast today. I'm thinking it's just going to be a couple of hours. I have a hard stop at about 5 o'clock. So that's in about 2 hours. So, very short episode today. 2 hours long. But I'm hoping we can use this time to get a taste for the Freestar Collective quest line. That's the goal. All right. And it's good to see so many people here for it. Lots of people in YouTube chat today. Tony J, Retro Wave Hunter, John Washburn, Laura Elstad, Julian Z, Jake Lewis, Random Fandom, Sean McElroy, John DeGM Berardino, Steve Whittle, Mr. Virus. And let me go ahead and get Facebook chat up. Julian Z. There we go. Uh, good to see everyone on Facebook today as well. <clears throat> we had a great time last night with Scotch and Smoke Rings. We got, um, we advanced the plot of Dead Space 3 significantly. And, um, what an interesting place that we ended up logging out at. I think I went overtime a little bit because I just wanted to see where it was going to take us. And I have to admit that I'm really enjoying the unique direction that the story of Dead Space 3 is taking us so far. It's unusual. It's not typical for the Dead Space franchise. Uh, but it doesn't feel out of place. It doesn't feel forced. And I'm enjoying it. So that was a breath of fresh air. Julian Z in the chat says, good afternoon, Ox. So good to see you on the Starfield Friday. Hope you're well. Thought for a second we were going to have Ox after dark. <clears throat> With how much the time changed. I don't know what you're talking about. The time didn't change much. It's much. It's always been two minutes. It, it took me two minutes to go live from the moment you got here. Whatever time that was for you. Between then and now, it was only two minutes. It's only ever two minutes, and that's not too long to wait. Caden Shade says, Why was Cinderella so bad at soccer? She always ran away from the ball. Aww. Hope all is well, Ox. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Caden Shade. <coughs> I'm still trying to get over the, the skeleton jug from last night. It just, I, I was thinking about it. I was so mad. Why was the skeleton a coward? Because he was spineless. It didn't, it doesn't work. I forget who, who had that in the chat, but that in, infuriated me. It doesn't work. Skeletons have spines. Spines are made of bone. Skeletons are bone. It's, they have the spines. And no matter how many times I explained it to chat, you guys just didn't, it's like I, I was eating crazy pills or something. It's gutless. Skeletons are cowards because they're gutless. Not spineless. You can make the joke work. Anyway. <clears throat> Good to see Alicia Wolf, Stephen Schulte, Toby Noble, Rum Monogold, and Robert Withers on the chat today. John Washburn says, how is he remembering that joke? It infuriated me. It made me upset. Gonna come in here and try to tell a dad joke that's not even a dad joke? It's, it's just a bad joke. It's a bad, bad joke. It's not funny. Street 101 says, What do you call a group of rabbits jumping backwards? A receding hairline. Also, Ox, help me. I can't stop playing Starfield. It's so addicting, lol. <laughs> it is rather addicting. And I, I'm not one to help. I mean, you've seen all of the live streams I've done. So. 
Vicious Chaser says, guess Ox had a bone to pick with that joke. I, I guess you're right. I guess that, that pun does, it does actually work, right? The Cigar Captain says, Hi Ox, did you know in persuasion attempts, if you have one attempt left, uh, left and pass it, it doesn't fail, even if that does fill the required uh, number of points. Yeah, uh, it, that's what the tutorial says at the beginning of the persuasion uh, introduction. As long as we pass a check, we can move on to the next one. Uh, but we only fail the persuasion check completely if we are out of attempts and we fail our most recent attempt. Uh, Karas Guardian says, Oxhorn, you are two hours late. I had three beers already. You started drinking at one? Well, one my time. I guess, what? Four your time? Where, where, what time zone are you on? I'm not gonna judge. Drink whenever you want. That was Karas's first super chat. Thank you so much, Karas. Mr. Virus says, skeleton jokes? That joke is dried as bones. Yes, Mr. Virus, thank you for that addition to our skeleton joke party. Skeleton jokes are as dry as bones. Oh. It's great. Okay, I got my coffee. I got my cigar. Mr. Virus says skeletons are working hard. They work themselves to the bone. Yes, thank you, Mr. Virus. These are, these are less dad jokes and more skeleton puns now. We're sort of just getting into pun territory. But yes, that they, they've just, that's good. Skeletons work themselves to the bone. Oh, yes. Let's start the game, I think. And let's see. We got an exit save. And there we are, the Kepler R. Hunter says, uh, want a short and funny quest to start the stream? New, new homestead colony on Saturn's moon of Titan. A doctor needs some help with an annoying tourist. Really? Well, maybe we should try it. Fifty-six rounds left. I think I blew through all of my 6.5 millimeter ammunition many broadcasts ago, and it just hasn't replenished itself. And I've been out of 7.7 .7 millimeter ammunition for a very long time. Julian Z says, Ox, I'm playing Starfield now, and I just found the whole trilogy of bad people, bad jokes, volume one through three on Sidonia. Thank you, Julian Z. I think I have collected them all by now. Chininator says, it's so punny. It is indeed punny. Puts us in a punny situation. Dust off complete. Hitomi says that's strange. 7.7 millimeter and 6.65 millimeter are pretty common. Must not be doing pirate hunting. Retro's firing. Orbit stabilized. Pirates love those ammunition types. I mean, I haven't been doing a lot of pirate hunting. Uh, 
Deliver 150 pieces of copper. How much copper do I have? I, I don't think I have a lot of copper, but let's... Let's see what the ship is currently holding. Cobalt, copper, 44. No, I'm not even halfway there. So if I'm gonna finish that one, it's gonna be after I set up copper mining and refining on, uh, on, a, on a system. On a, on a planet. <clears throat> Karis Guardian became a bronze ox. Thank you, Karis Guardian. Oh! oh. That's right! I've got organs to sell. I almost forgot about that. Let's go to Wolf. There's the den. You guys didn't remind me. You were supposed to remind me that I had organs to sell. I almost went straight to the soul system. I will never get tired of that. Steel 101 says, love the Star Eagle ship. So cool, man. Thank you, Steel 101. Dan acknowledging incoming hail. Docking Bay 1 is free. J uh, Ludy Coden says, what do noses and nerds have in common? Everyone picks on them. Like it, love. Love ya, he says. Thank you so much, Lou. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Everyone picks on them. Was there something? May I be of service? Certainly. Okay, so we're going to sell and miscellaneous and harvested organs. Let's see, do I have any ammunition that's... Yeah, I've got Ultra Mag. I guess all. Then we gotta go to buyback. How do you go to buy back? There you go, buy back. <clears throat> now let's see if he's got some of the ammunition that I need. 7.7, 7, yeah. 2,000 for 300 rounds. All right. 6.5. 4,000 for 200 rounds? Yikes. No. It's getting expensive. All right. All right, back to sell. Let's see if I picked up anything that I can sell. Radioactive Professionals Advanced Orion. I should really start using my laser weapons because um, I've got so much laser ammunition. Cornered Rip Shank, we can sell that. Sell from ship's inventory. We don't have any. All right, let's take uh, Andrea here. You have my attention. I am happy to help shoulder the load. <clears throat> 
Zach Taylor says, Hey, Ox, not sure if you know, but you can access ship cargo hold from menu ship. Then it's on the bottom. You don't have to walk over to the cargo hold. Access cargo hold anywhere within 500 meter meters of the ship. Thank you, Zach Taylor. Okay, yeah. Uh, the Ashta Tamer is unique, so I want to keep that. Berserker Suppressed Calibrated Regulator. Hold on a second. Um, is that the only spacesuit she has? Oh, she's still carrying my Manta stuff. Oh, man. Well, I want to keep that. <clears throat> Suppressed calibrated. That's 67. That's 42. Why does she have these? Tonto, that was my first one. Okay. Well, um, this is epic. But it does less damage, and I think that's due to, due to the mods. I'm going to keep it for now. And uh, I guess that's her spacesuit, so I'm not going to sell it. And then I'll keep my Ash to Tamer. Right. How may the Trade Authority assist you? I hope we have what you need. Okay, so there's the Berserker's Calibrated Regulator, but I've currently got the Hitman Suppressed Calibrated Regular, so I don't need it. Regulator, so I don't need it. Uh, I've got a Legendary Solstice back at base. I don't need it. <clears throat> now the Urban Eagle. Uh, I don't know if I... I don't recall if I have a Legendary Urban Eagle or not, so I'm going to save it for now. A Furious Assassin's Urban Eagle. Now my calibrator, uh, my my regulator is suppressed, so I don't need a suppressed weapon, especially since this does 68 damage already. This only does 50, and that's a legendary urban eagle. So I'll go ahead and sell it. Instigating refined lawgiver. Hold on a second. Mo modified shoddy. There's the professional's advanced shoddy. So this does half the damage as this one. Uh, and it's got a slower fire rate. Why would I ever use this? Because it's fully automatic? Oh. Um, now, I tried um, I tried this in the field, and it's really good. So we're going to go ahead and sell that. And I don't need these. 67 damage. I don't need either either of these. I do have an XM2311 back at my home, so I don't need either of those. I'm currently using this micro gun because it's got the exterminator legendary effect, but I've already blown through all of my 7.7 .7 millimeter ammunition. I, I just bought some. Okay. Now, where's my, my other lawgiver? There it is, the anti-personnel lawgiver. This does way more damage. Why? 36 damage. It's a boosted lawgiver with a scope and a, a suppressor. It's a refined lawgiver. Deals double damage to targets with full health. Well, this is clearly a better, a better rifle. But it doesn't have a silencer. But what good is a silencer... If you're not doing enough damage. So I'll go ahead and sell the anti-personnel. 10% damage against humans or deals double damage to targets of full health. I'll go ahead and sell this. Actually, I've got another one back at my, my base. Joshua Anhalt says the advanced weapons have the second best base stats. Maybe worth keeping and upgrading those. Okay. 
Fran Green says, hey, Ox, really enjoying your live streams of Starfield. What are your thoughts on the Terramorph quest? <clears throat> that was Fran's first super chat. I covered it in depth when I completed the UC quest line, and I really enjoyed the whole Terramorph story. I thought it was really well done. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Zach Taylor gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Zach Taylor, and congratulations to Diamond Lions FC, Brandon Anderson, Ash, Matthew Smith, Dustin Lead, and Joshua. No, and then that was Joshua's super chat as well. All right, um, so I'm going to go ahead and sell this one. And I don't know if I have an Urban Eagle back, so I'm going to keep that. Plus, it does way more damage. And there we go. Now, I'm going to put the laser weapon that I just got in my rifle slot. Just because I need to start using all of this energy ammunition. And on that note, I should probably go equip more energy weapons, like my energy pistol. But you can't silence an energy weapon, can you? Hmm. Fire rate of 33. I'll go, I'll go back and take a look at some of my weapons t to start using some of the energy. Oh, that's right. I've got the Genghis Khan outfit. Zero. <laughs> okay, so the hat is nothing. But it just kind of looks funny. The outfit, 15 physical, 15 EM. I mean, it's just worse. It's got 10 thermal and 10, 15 airborne. But, uh, yeah, it's just worse. For the collector, I guess. I mean, I could wear that, but... <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Why not? It's ridiculous. Yes, you can. You can put a silencer on a laser weapon? What? Really? Huh. Maybe I should go back and do some mods for my weapons here, because that's crazy. Got anything you need to offload? Trade Authority is always by. Kiosk right here for you. Okay, uh, yeah, we need to do that. Let's go back to New Atlantis. We've got all of those weapons in our locker. All green on release. We're free to fly. We're starting to run out of ballistic ammunition, so, uh, let's go, before we go to the soul system, let's go to Alpha Centauri. Wow, why is this so difficult? feedback checks out. You We're are entering place. United Colony space. Maintain port. Right, we gotta wait for him to go through his... his uh... Prepare to be scanned. Scan complete. Go ahead and land. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm disappointed that our player home doesn't have a fast travel marker. It kind of makes it... Eh. Like, what's the point? I mean, I can fast travel directly to the lodge, which already has all of my weapon workbenches and a bed and safes and all of that. Why would I ever want to go to my player home if I have to lug it there every time I come to the planet? I'm fortunate that Walter has used his considerable funds to maintain the lodge, are we not? Okay. Garrett Horsch says UC distribution and the arsenal sell ammo here. Thank you, Garrett. 
Uh, all right, so for pistols, we have the Nova Light and uh, the Solstice energy pistols. Now, this is a particle beam pistol. But I don't know if we can add a, a silencer to it. I mean, if we can add a... It's, still, it does 44 damage. It's a lot less than my other one. The Arc Welder... What's the range? It's 20. So, I'd have to try it out. This does 34 damage? Why does it only do 34 damage? Okay, that uses 11 millimeter, which is rare. I didn't realize I had this. Tesla boosted calibrated regulator. Bashing Hitman and Tesla. Can I add a suppressor to that? Unrestrained Vengeance. Fire rate 33. That's 18 damage, so... I think I need to get rid of that. Now that's uh that's a unique weapon. So I didn't have uh, a legendary urban eagle. This does way more damage. Okay, so 65 damage compared to Where is it? There. The calibrated regulator, 68 damage. But I've been using this as a sniper rifle. So, so let's go see if we can put a... Uh, as a sniper pistol, I should say. So let's go see if we can put a suppressor on it. Now I need muzzle mods too, and I need tungsten. Wow, I just, uh, I shouldn't even bother with modifying my weapons until I start doing colonies, because there's just never an opportunity to collect the materials I need while just questing. Okay, there are a couple I can complete here. Let's take some chems really quickly. What was it called? Oh, I keep forgetting what it was called. There it is. Neurojack. 
Equip the lab cut, says Shibify. It's only worth it if I equip it when doing weapon mods, because it only works on weapon mods. It doesn't work on research projects. Right, titanium and adhesive. Yit yitterbum. Eaterbum. Eaterbum. To upgrade my receiver mods. Okay. Well, that's the best I can do. Need neon, which I don't have. I've got the short scope, grip and stunt tactical already, magazine and battery. Standard explosive. Uh, yeah, I'd need battery mods. I can't believe I'm this far into the game, and I just, I can't upgrade my weapons. Because I haven't done, uh, I don't have the materials for it. Okay, uh, let's work on the Orion here. We're going to be using this for a while. Lung barrel, recon laser sight, reflex sight. Can we do a short scope? No, I need adhesive. Ah! Stealth lasers? I've, it's got stealth lasers? <laughs> okay, so it is uh, silenced. All right. Grip and stock. We've got the standard grip without the stock. There's the stabilizing stock. I need neodymium. Ah. So close. Ignition beams currently installed. And I can't do any... I could do tactical battery. Uh, lighter mag that vastly... Uh, increases aim down sight speed and reload. Lasers do more damage and outburn enemies. Alright, I, I think I'll stick with my ignition beams. Okay. Long barrel, laser sight, reflex sights, suppressor. Uh, I can't do the tactical grip. Why? Titanium. And we're semi automatic. I think I've got what I need here. Let's uh, do a quick store and then on to the next quest.
cá. I think I'm gonna like it. Now, uh, in a previous uh, stream, somebody said that there's a book on uh, it, on Titan that gives me a new I can understand on wanting to honor or even celebrate history, but this may take it too far. What? What is she talking about? All right, here we are at New Homestead. And you're saying there's a quest here that's really funny. Provided one does not cling too tightly to it. Enjoy your visit here. You don't want to get hurt or sick around here. Dr. Lakota really doesn't care for tourists. Wish Dr. someone Lakota. could convince her otherwise. Careful. There are some dangerous areas around here that are not part of any tours. Did you see? It's been a while since I last visited. Nice to see this place still has the same charm. Don't stay outside for too long here on Titan. I'm freeze solid without the proper protection. Feel okay. free to look around, but do not touch. Looks like the doctor is over there somewhere. Sean Do uh, Doggery with a super tip. Thank you so much, Sean. Okay, lots of junk around here. Simpler times, I read that. This is a boring assignment, but let's keep it that way. I don't mind the tourists. They help the local economy. Heads up if you're planning on going to chunks. Luther's been bothering anyone with a ship for help. You come from one of those planets with beautiful skies and fresh air. My, how I'd love to visit one day. Ah, someone new. Are you a tourist or have you just moved to New Homestead? Um, I'm here visiting. I'm interested in learning about the colony. Well, there's lots to learn. You can always feel free to try one of the historical tours or ask the locals about life here. I'm fascinated by the other worlds in the settled systems. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Oh, wonderful. What's New Atlantis like? It's amazing. Huge skyscrapers, beautiful skies, people from all walks of life. It's not as impressive as they make it out to be. Too much hustle and bustle. It's terrible. Give me a frontier city or a small colony like this any day. Or I'm not sure I've never been there. Let's try that one. Oh, my. That sounds incredible. Ever since I overheard one of the tourists speaking about it, I've always wanted to go. We hear about it, of course, but we rarely get much exposure to other worlds beyond the people who come from them to visit our little colony. 
I wonder if I can convince Nathaniel to go on a trip there with me and our daughter. Do you mind if I ask you another question? I don't mind. Thanks. I promise not to take too much of your time. Is the Freestar Collective as lawless as I've heard? Um... <laughs> The Free Stars stand as a monument to freedom. Anyone can live as they please. It's not as lawless as they lead you to believe. People still believe in rules and justice. It's dangerous. Your only options are to rely on the Rangers or take the law into your own hands. Uh, let's try and it's not as lawless as they lead you to believe. I figured the stories weren't all true. How else would you expect people to live together if you can't trust in laws to keep everyone safe? Even in a small community like ours, we have to maintain law and order. Though, I understand it gets difficult to always protect that out in the vastness of space. I imagine it's the same in the Freestar Collective. Is it okay if I change the subject? Okay, yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Are there really planets full of plants, fresh air, and water? Maybe, but I've never been to one. Sure, but they're not all they're cracked up to be. You see one, you've seen them all. Yes, there are beautiful planets teeming with life of all kinds. I've read about them. It seems incredible, doesn't it? I've only ever known Titan, and it's always so cold and drab. I've always dreamed of visiting one to breathe the air, feel the warmth of its sun, but my husband is reluctant to leave our home. Can I ask you something else? Wow, just, okay, how many questions do you have? Oh, thank you. Is space travel as exciting as it seems? Jeez, lady. Uh, I'm still amazed by the awe and wonder of it every time I go out there. Space is incredible, but it's also extremely dangerous. It's nice, but you get used to it after a while. Honestly, it's a lot of nothing. I can't think of anything more boring than space. Um, let's try you get used to it after a while. I'd like to think that I wouldn't ever get used to it, that every time would be just as impressive as the first. But you're not the first person I've spoken to who has said something similar, so I have to believe that I could become just as jaded. Those are all the questions I have at the moment. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day for me. Okay. Well. Fascinating. Well, we used to get more tourists than we do these days. Did you know that Earth had all sorts of cool animals? Actually, lots of planets do, but not this one. Sad, huh? Hello, I'm not really supposed to talk with tourists, but I kind of want to anyway. And I don't think my papa is paying attention. You're not going to tell him, are you? Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, kid. Now I feel like I have to tell him. Maybe we should respect your parents' wishes? I don't think I will, not unless he asks, or no, not if you don't want me to. Well, I mean, let's try to respect her parents' wishes. It's just my daddy, really. My mama's okay with it. But, oh, fine. If you don't wanna, I get it. But, um, I love talking with tourists, so I'll be here if you still want to talk. Um, okay, well, if her mom says it's okay, it's okay. Do you enjoy working on the farm? I think it's pretty fun. And I get to be around my mama and my papa all day, so that's cool. They say we all have to work a little, because it takes all of us to make the community work, just like on Earth a really, really, really long time ago. Someday, I think it'd be cool to see other places and do other things, but this is fine for now. Why wasn't your dad wanting you talking to tourists? My mama says it's because he thinks we'd up and leave if we found out about the rest of the worlds out there. But I keep telling him, I love it here, and I love him, and I would never leave him. Eh. He doesn't believe it. He says the kids almost always want to leave when they grow up. But not me. Nope. I just want to visit somewhere else. Maybe. Yikes. What is with this husband and father? I mean, you can't keep your kids with you forever. Are there a lot of other kids in New Homestead? Not really. There's some, though. Most are around my age. We all go to school in the same room. 
Is school here the same as other schools in the settled systems? I don't... Uh, I don't know. I've never been to any other schools. We mostly learn about the history of the soul system and Earth and stuff like that until we get old enough to go on our learning vacation. That's when we get to leave to go to school somewhere else for a few years or travel and visit other worlds, try out jobs and stuff. Oh, I can't wait. All right, well, let's see Let if, me know uh, if you have any other questions. Yeah, let's see if she has other questions. I always wonder what it's like where other people come from. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. That's it. Okay, so the, the doctor is back here, right? Let's see if we can find the father. You all can travel the stars, but someone's got to respect and preserve the old soul traditions. There he is. I overheard you speaking to my wife, Mara, filling her head with ideas about picking up and leaving home. You got anything to say for yourself? Yeah, she clearly wants to visit off-world. Why not let her? Listen here. Mara's free to make her own decisions. I'm not here to control her if that's what you're insinuating. But that doesn't mean I take kindly to other people manipulating her and telling her the other worlds are full of sunshine and rainbows. We live a simple, traditional life here, and it's important to the community that we maintain that. Do you understand? <sighs> what traditions? Traditions like the way we tend this farm. Strong family ties. Early colonial life. We do it all with the bare minimum technologies to survive. Everything else is hard work done by humans. It's good for humanity's soul. Right. What exactly are you doing in those bushes? Hands up. Keep your hands above your shoulders, please. I'm just not... This isn't making me comfortable. What's so important about your traditions? People rely on technology too much. We need to remember how to perform the basics to survive in case we ever find ourselves without said technology. We need to remember where we came from, Earth, this system, lest we forget and repeat the same mistakes as before. We're one of the last colonies charged with that preservation. That's why it's important. Garrett Horsch says, a lot of great Earth lore here and fun quests. Thank you, Garrett. Psychic Afro Dancer says that lady asked you all those questions and didn't even look you in the eye, lol. Yeah, this guy's not looking me in the eye either. She was interested in looking outside. He just wants to pee in this plant. Uh, we could say, I understand, or hey, you're right. It's none of my business. Sorry I said anything, or I don't agree with you. People should explore the universe freely. Or hey, just so you know, I talked with your daughter too. <laughs> Did you? Well... She should know better than to talk with tourists like you, but that's between me and her. Now, you might want to consider heading off before you cause any more trouble. Oops, I probably shouldn't have said that, huh? I overheard you speaking to my wife, Mara. Feeling her. You got anything to say for yours? Listen here. Mara's free to make her, but that doesn't mean I take... We live a simple, traditional... Uh, let's say I don't agree with you. People should explore the universe freely. We're going to have to agree to disagree, then. I only ask that you respect our wishes. You say our. Those are your wishes. They're not necessarily your wife and daughter's wishes. We take ah, vandalism ah, ah. seriously here. You don't mess with history. There's the doctor. I'll treat you if you need it, but please try to be more careful around here. Great, another tourist. <sighs> Let me guess, you slipped on the ice and need a doctor to wrap your sprained ankle? Pleasant. What's your problem with tourists? Don't they help the local economy? They do, but they're also a terrible burden for a small colony doctor like myself. I have enough trouble treating our own people with the time and resources I have. That's kind of a terrible attitude for a doctor. Maybe. I'm sorry if it sounded harsh. I'm just frustrated. However, I think if you walked a mile in my shoes, you'd probably feel the same. Anyway, what can I do for you? Is it difficult being a doctor in such an old fashioned community? Hmm. Even though we don't have shiny new medical facilities, I imagine it's easier than wherever you're from. 
We have fewer people here, and we're very responsible when it comes to our personal health and welfare. So there's not much I can't handle. Then For anything else, we can get access to off-world specialists. Contrary to popular belief, we're not primitive. Are there any dangerous hazards to worry about on Titan? It's a harsh world, but as long as you're inside or wear a suit when going out, you'll be fine here. There's no breathable air on the surface, and you'll quickly freeze to death outside without protective gear, but otherwise the hazards are minimal. New Homestead was an early colony research base and has stood the test of time. It's safe, and it's proof that people can live pretty much anywhere. Don't worry so much. <laughs> You really don't seem to like tourists. I don't. They make a mockery of new homestead culture. And on top of it, they're reckless. It's like I said before, I feel like I'm treating them more often than our own people. It must keep you busy, but what's so bad about that? The problem is that most of the tourists' injuries are from preventable accidents. Things our people know how to avoid. And often, I have to take care of them first because they can't leave with their injuries, so I have to put off seeing my regular patients. So not only am I working extra hard for people who have little respect for me, it comes at the expense of our own. Sounds frustrating. I wish there was something I could do. Actually, maybe there is. I have an idea that may be best suited for someone relatively unknown, instead of myself. <laughs> I've got a mountain of work and a reputation to maintain. Oh. So I bought a realistic monster costume. The plan was to wear it, scare tourists away, and start a rumor about terrible creatures living on Titan. <laughs> I figure that once word gets around, tourism will take enough of a dive to give me some relief. Uh, brilliant plan. Brilliant. Yes, what's the best way to keep tourists away? Dress up in a fancy mascot costume and put on a show. No one will want to see that. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. Do you really think it'll work? Maybe. I'm not sure. I know it sounds crazy, but I don't have any other ideas. The tourism board flat out won't help me, and I don't have money in the budget to hire additional help. And you know these tourists will believe anything they see in here. I think it's worth a shot. Worst case scenario, I'm back to square one. Oh, yes. I am so going to do this. Now that just sounds fun. I don't care if it works. I'll do it anyway. That's the spirit. To be honest, I'm not sure it'll work either, but I feel like there's no harm in trying. Here's the costume. I think this will work best on the surface. So just find a group and run up to them acting like a convincing alien monster. <laughs> With any luck, they'll run screaming and book the next flight out of here. That's exactly what they're going to do because you understand human nature. Of course you do. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? Oh, yeah. That's it. That's the thing right there. I'm a giant alien tick. <laughs> okay. Me. <laughs> Catch ya. It's always so cold here. Right. The people here live a simple life. Try not to complicate it. Julian Z says, what the heck? Is she a Scooby-Doo villain? Lol. I mean, this is definitely giving me Scooby-Doo vibes. <laughs> Now let's find some we tourists. Titans are hardy people. You'd have to be to live in a place like this. Oh, I'm sure. So hardy. You get used to the methane process and smell after a while. Gross. Right, so we got tourists on this planet. Let's go Damn, give them a on scare. The again. Joyce always seems to need help. Big word dry. Oh, man. <laughs> What? Why 
Why is it not working? Shouldn't I be wearing the spacesuit? None, none. Monster costume. You have it set to not to show your suit. Do I? Isn't that my suit right there? But I'm outside. I only have it set to not show my suit when I go inside. Press one, says chat. Oh. You're still in the settlement, says the chat. Oh. Okay, well that's weird because I am outside, so. In the inventory, press one. No, that's T. Show spacesuits in settlement, press T. There we go. There we are. That's what I wanted. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Look at me go. I'm a scary monster from the planet Titan. change my angle. I want to get that mountain in the background. Oh, that is a scary orifice. Raw! Raw! Thank God! What is that thing? Raw! Raw! Taurus! Raw! Ah, I got you! Raw! I got you! You're stuck. Rah, rah. Get, get away from me! I'm right here! Go away, Taurus! You're not welcome! I'm a giant tick monster! Uh, I'm gonna get the other one. Come back here, you! Ha
you are not looking to cause any trouble in that costume of yours. <laughs> Interesting costume you have there. Very spooky. Yeah, rawr. Wow. That's some costume you got there. What did the kids say? Where's the little kid? I want to scare the kid. Come here, kid. Ha ha, rawr. Bye. Ooh, she, she's not saying anything. Nothing? Nothing for the monster? My daddy says farming is really important. But I kind of want to do other things. Bye. Okay, she doesn't have anything about the monster. New Homestead is a living history exhibit, but these are real people, so please be kind to them. Raw! <laughs> what are you supposed to be? <laughs> Looks so stupid and silly. <laughs> That's the reaction I was hoping the tourists would give me, but no, they actually got scared. If you take one of those stupid tours, make sure to follow the rules. They're for your own safety and my sanity. What can I do for you? Where did you get a costume like that anyway? I bought it from a private seller. They said they got it from someone who wore it in a secondary school as their sports team mascot. I guess it was supposed to be a tardigrade or something. Anyway, the person I bought it from modified it a bit so they could use it in an independent movie they were making. But I guess that went nowhere, so they had to sell it. <laughs> Lucky me, I suppose. I scared off some tourists for you. Oh, I'm glad it worked. Thank you. With any luck, I'll be able to give more attention to my regular patients now. Tell you what, if you want to come back later and do this for me a couple more times, I'll even let you keep the costume. <laughs> okay. I gotta, I gotta do this quest over and over again to keep the costume. Oh man. Let's see, Doctor Lakota's computer, advanced lock. Both, 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 none. Top, bottom. Start with this. Then we'll start with that. Okay, so that one needs that on the side, but let's focus on this. We've got uh, that. Then with that there, we've got that. Upcoming appointments, uh, Michaelia Paris, patient complains of itching sensation inside her left ear canal. Uh, Nasta Moscow, yearly gyne exam. Uh, Barnabas Lima, knee sprain, checkup. Gasper Ankara, aches all over, but especially lower back in the morning. Probably just poor bed support. Sharia Nothamburi, possible arthritis. Walk in hours until end of day. <clears throat> Patient notes. Garrett Horsch says Heller hangs out in the bar here by the museum. Heller. Okay, I'll go check it out. Uh, Emily Liskin. Patient suffered a fall while out touring the icy crags south of New Homestead. Patient was airlifted here with injuries to both legs. Fractured two metatarsals on the left foot. Treated and set the wounds, prescribed extra strength painkillers, and called it a day. Jasira Thomason, Mrs. Thomason, came in complaining of acute frostbite. Turns out she was just very cold. 
prescribed her hot cocoa and told her to stay outside if she can't tell the difference between being cold and actual frostbite. <laughs> she hates her job. Marco went. Marco went that way. Marco thought it would be a good idea to sneak into the methane plant by himself instead of sticking to the tour. Almost asphyxiated on methane and had to be given oxygen. He'll live. Terry Glasgow. Terry is a local, one of my regulars. Normally, Terry's a bit of a hypochondriac, but this was just a regular yearly physical. No abnormalities. Blood work looks mostly good. LDL cholesterol is a little high. Need to cut down on fatty foods and exercise more. And then Piera uh, Kowals Kowals tweeted second-degree burns from leaning on a steam pipe on mid-brachium. Claimed she was just trying to get warm. Learned a lesson. Instructed her to apply antibacterial slash anti-inflammatory balm three times a day and keep the burn wrapped. Okay. Sean Doggerney says... I never had says, the patience for computer systems. Just finished watching your Fallout 1 playthrough. I don't have time to play everything. I want to. And this has been so fun to watch. Thank you, Sean. I've been having a blast, too. Glad you enjoy my Fallout 1 playthrough. All right, we got a lounge here. I keep on hearing about this tour, and I'm interested. Especially since we don't have a lot of time today. Hey, it's the museum. Look at that. Museum display. A range of antique earth computers ranging from the late 1980s to the mid-2000s. Computers have existed in some form since Charles Babbage's Difference Engine in 1822. The years from the mid-20th century to the early 21st century were known for some of the greatest advances in computing technology, as computers shrank from gigantic room-sized devices filled with vacuum tubes to small boxes filled with microprocessors like the one you see here. I don't understand why we found a starship, this ECS constant, filled with these, these ancient computers from the 80s and 90s. Now that looks like something from today, but even that has a disk drive, which we wouldn't have anymore. Let's see what else we got here. Ah, to lay eyes on the earth just once. Okay, Maurice, keep it to yourself. Museum display, antique instrument of unknown origin earth, believed to be of West African origin, possibly a type of Nugani. Uh, a harp-like string instrument traditionally used in ceremonies accompanied with chanting and storytelling. This instrument was generously donated to the new Homestead Museum, but its true origin is unfortunately lost to time. Maurice! Hello there. Are you here to peruse our little museum exhibit? <laughs> yeah, we could say, you can't just put crappy old junk in a display and call it a museum. Nah, museums aren't my thing. I didn't actually know it was a museum. Not yet, but I was planning on it. Or we could say, yes, I was just looking at some of the items in your collection. Wonderful. These are all rare artifacts from before the collapse of Earth. There isn't much of this stuff left outside of private collections, but here we're happy to share a glimpse of them with the public. If you have any questions about the exhibit or New Homestead, I'm happy to answer as best as I can. What can you tell me about how New Homestead came to be? It's an interesting story. New Homestead began as a scientific research base called the Titan Astrobase, back when space travel was in its infancy. The hope was that humanity would be able to discover simple alien life here given the moon's composition and water supply. When that ultimately failed, 
It was repurposed as a colony research base where scientists and engineers studied how to build colonies on inhospitable worlds. Then, finally, when gravity drives were commonplace and we started finding Earth-like planets, New Homestead was born as a living history community to preserve that past. These guys really trying hard to have an old man voice. Everyone here has such interesting family names. What's the deal with that? When our early colonists learned of Earth's demise, they decided to take on the names of their cities of origin as a way to remember their heritage. Now, some may have been lost in translation over the years, and some may have taken it more seriously than others. accurate. For instance, my family comes from the city of Lyon, in a country that was called France. Who are you and what do you do around here? I am Maurice Lyon, and I am the community elder. As the oldest living citizen at 96, my only job is to keep Earth history alive. Looking good. I tell stories to the young people and the visitors from other worlds. Although my memory isn't what it used to be, I try my best to get the stories right. Looking good for 96. Could you tell me a story about Earth? Oh, here we go. Sure. I'd love to. There was once a war so big that they say all of the world was involved. This was actually the second time it happened. They fought because a terrible man named Hitler rose to power and slaughtered many innocents. Millions were lost. Even the colony war pales in comparison. Really? <clears throat> I didn't realize the colony war uh, paled in comparison. I apologize. Could you speak up? Yes, tell me another Earth story. Why, certainly. It's what I do. There was a time when huge monstrosities called dinosaurs ruled over Earth, long before humans existed. They were similar to some of the larger life forms you might see elsewhere in the settled systems. Their reign ended when a... Uh, I can never remember <laughs> if it was a comet, an asteroid, or a meteor that hit the Earth. Whatever it was, it nearly wiped out most of the life at that time. Well, I mean, asteroids orbit. Comets also orbit. Comets are Kuiper Belt objects that are brought in from the outer edges of the solar system and then begin to sublimate as they get closer to the sun. And meteors are just rocky materials that actually enter the atmosphere. So it's a meteor. Anyway, uh, have time for another story. Hmm. Let me think of a good one. A long time ago, thousands of years, humans built a wall so large, it spanned the northern length of one of Earth's largest empires, China. They called it the Great Wall of China and it was meant to keep out invading hordes. If I recall correctly, it didn't always work as well as they had hoped. I'll have to look it up again. Memory's not what it once was. <laughs> okay, and now it's grayed out, so I guess that's all the stories he has. Tell me more about the exhibit. Of course, certainly. We have several items in our collection that we rotate in and out over time, but they all originate from the same place, Earth. We have everything from toys to antique technology to sports memorabilia. We even used to have an old Earth vehicle, but we had to sell it when we Aww. ran out of space for it. 
most of our collection was donated by fellow Earth enthusiasts and historians who felt it belonged close to the homeland here in the Soul System. Okay, his voice is beginning to grate on me, so we'll say goodbye. Thanks for visiting. Thank you, Maurice. Museum display, we've got books here. Uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> Assorted Earth Media, clockwise from bottom to left. Tales from Space and Time, H.G. Wells, 1899, On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin, 1859, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, 1818, Portable Compact Disc Player, 1993, Sailing Alone Around the World, Joshua Slocum, 1900s, Videotape, 70, uh, 1976. None of these are rare. We find these all the time, all over the place. <laughs> okay, let's see, what's this? Careful out there. Some wackos running around in an obviously fake monster costume trying to scare people. Yep, that's me. Various Earth sports photos and memorabilia from left to right. Championship baseball, Boston, Massachusetts, 1978. Game winning soccer ball, International League, 2018. Basketball used by the United States World Champion Basketball Team, 1992. Record setting home run baseball, 1935. Then a bunch of data disks. I guess they couldn't fill up this display case any other way. Oh, a piggy bank and a wooden duck. Commercial reproductions of Earth fauna. Oh, no. Throughout human history, replicas of Earth animals were used in many different ways, from toys and games to more practical uses, such as these items. Piggy bank left. As far back as the 15th century, hollowed out ceramic statue of the animal known as pig were popularly used to store physical currency. Decoy duck, right. Waterfowl, known as ducks, were once hunted near Earth's marshes for sport and food using ballistic rifles. To facilitate this activity, hunters would often place wooden decoy ducks in the water and use a small woodwind instrument to produce an accompanying call resembling that of the duck in order to lure it in. Store? Oh yeah, can I buy like old Earth stuff here? Welcome to New Homestead. You sound positively thrilled to be here. We got a hockey stick. Ice hockey stick used on Earth in the city of Edmonton, Canada during the, a 1988 championship game. Ice hockey is a contact sport played on an ice rink where two teams with five players and two goaltenders called goalies compete to deposit a rubberized puck in the other team's goal. The players traverse the rink on specialized shoes mounted on thin metal blades called ice skates and manipulate the puck with specialized curved sticks such as the one displayed here. Ooh, what is all this? Miscellaneous Earth knickknacks from left to right. Unknown decorative liquor bottle brought from Earth to New Homestead during its original mission. Electronic pipes used to inhale various legal substances <laughs> during early New Homestead colonial times. Uh, equinoctial dial, equinoctial dial brought to New Homestead by one of the original settlers as a family heirloom. Original construction, 1800s. Scroll case of unknown date and origin believed to have once been a sacred relic. This old scroll case likely predates any other synthetic item in the museum. The scroll itself has been lost to time. So those are vaping pens or something? Okay. We got rocks. Natural space debris like asteroids and meteors, uh, meteoroids routinely enters planetary or moon atmosphere to impact the surface below. When a meteor survives its journey through the atmosphere and makes impact, the result is a meteorite such as the ones seen in these display cases. Displayed to the left, polished and rounded piece of the Gibeon mete meteorite, which impacted Earth 600 million years ago. Displayed ahead from left to right, a uh, carbonaceous chondrite meteorite, which impacted Titan 250 million years ago. A piece of the Dronino meteorite, which is believed to have impacted Earth more than 12,000 years ago. <clears throat> Halfway Nuts says, I think I figured people out. 
You're being told <coughs> to go to all of these side quest locations because they want you to make more lore videos. Clever. <laughs> Did you see that weird monster thing? Nearly scared me half to death until I realized how fake it was. I think you're right, it is clever. Scale model of the HMS Beagle. Originally constructed for the British Navy as a war vessel and first launched in 1820, this Cherokee-class brig sloop was most famous for transporting renowned scientist Charles Darwin during his famous worldwide research voyage in 1831 to 1836. Scale model of the RV Calypso. Originally commissioned by the British Royal Navy as a minesweeper vessel and launched in 1942, it was later repurposed by famed Earth oceanographer researcher Jacques Cousteau in 1950. Cousteau dedicated his life to exploring Earth's oceans further and deeper than anyone before him. During his expeditions, he formed a deeper understanding of the sea's fragile ecosystems and became an advocate for ocean preservation. Jacques Cousteau. Brown Horse Tavern. All right, chat wants me to go there to talk to a guy, but we got more displays here. NASA. Hey, we we got some NASA stuff. Oh, cool. Uh, let, yeah, we got real NASA stuff. Yeah, let's see this. NASA, one of several Earth-based space agencies, was instrumental in humankind's earliest journeys into space. Indeed, it was due to the efforts of NASA that New Homestead exists. <clears throat> in 2017, NASA sent an unmanned probe to Titan, which paved the way for the development of the Titan Astro Base, completed in 2130. By 2185, the Titan Astro Base project was transitioned into the colony of New Homestead. From left to right, NASA prototype rocket, NASA branded mug, Vostok 1, a USSR space program, space shuttle discovery, Apollo 11, and collectible snow globes. Items on loan from NASA. On loan from NASA? Does NASA still exist? Really? Okay. Let's find NASA's headquarters. <coughs> Whoa! All right, what's this? Meteorites. Natural space debris like asteroids and meteoroids routinely... Uh, this is... No, this is actually a little bit different, but it's got... Okay. Um, routinely enters planetary or moon atmosphere to impact the surface below. When a meteor survives its journey through the atmosphere and makes impact, the result is a meteorite, such as the one seen in the display case. Left to right, unaltered piece of the Gibeon meteorite, which impacted Earth 600 million years ago. Fluorescent meteorite, which impacted Titan around 20 million years ago. Slab of the Nantan meteorite, which is believed to have impacted Earth 800 million years ago. Wow. That is fascinating. Let's see what these uh, starship tours look like. I can't imagine living here. These people sure are hardy. Do you want to know what life life was like for the early like colonists? Starship <laughs> Tours was voted best historic tour three years in a row. Let me read this slate first. Brochure Rough Draft. Visit historical new homestead and take a comprehensive genuine starship, star, uh, star snap, I'm sorry, star sap? Star zap. Star Zap Tour. <clears throat> Learn about the early days of humanity's ventures into space. See how people lived in the colonies of yore. Speak and interact with traditional Titan citizens experiencing early colony life. Explore the frozen surface of Titan. That's some thumping beats there. Why, hello there! I'm Bill Starsap of Starsap Tours. Let me tell you, this place is full of history and interesting facts. For instance, did you know that New Homestead was one of the first colonies established outside of Earth? It's been populated in some capacity for over 200 years. So it was Starsap. All right. We could say, of course, everyone knows that, or I'm not really interested in history, or that's interesting. I'd love to know more about New Homestead, or that's incredible. I have no idea. Let's go. That's interesting. Well, there's plenty more where that came from if you're interested in taking one of my famous tours. So what do you say? I've got an opening. I could take you on a tour right now if you'd like. Yeah. Thank you. 
Speak with Bill Starsap. What do you recommend seeing while I'm here? Anything to avoid? Definitely check out the Brown Horse Tavern. Good food, great atmosphere. Avoid spending too much time outdoors. It's freezing out there. <laughs> Any more than that, and well, I'd be giving away the tour for free. Why would someone want a tour of New Homestead? Why would I want a tour of New Homestead, he says. Well, let me tell you, New Homestead is living history. These people are direct descendants of some of the first settlers to leave Earth. If you've ever wanted to know what that early colonial life was like, this is your chance to embark on a fun-filled exhibition unlike any other. No offense, but Star Sap is an unusual name. Sounds almost made up. <laughs> None taken. I get it all the time. If you think it sounds made up, well, that's because it is. I come from an eccentric family. Back in the early days of space travel, generations ago, my ancestors were really into science fiction. They wanted a name that seemed like it fit into the stories they grew up with, so they changed their last name, and the Star Sap family name was born. Used to be Bramblefoot before that. <laughs> their ancestors liked a different type of fiction. <laughs> From Bramblefoot to Star Sap. Of all of the space agey names they could have chosen, they chose Star Sap? Star Zap would have been better. Need some more time to think about it? How about Star Syrup? Star Resin? Okay, I'd like to go on a tour of New Homestead. Excellent! You won't regret it! My tours are one of a kind! <laughs> Now, there's just the matter of price. The going rate for a genuine Star Sap tour is only 100 credits. I mean, that's not too bad, but we can pass a persuade check to say I'd like to. But that's more than I was hoping to spend. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> 100 credits is very reasonable, I think. I mean, he's right. It is very reasonable. We could pass a four persuasion check. Let's start by saying, I'm sure your tour is great, but you haven't really sold it to me yet. That's okay. This tour isn't for everyone. I know that, but my price is fair and I think it's well worth the money. No one's forcing you to go on it. <laughs> uh, you kind of pulled a bait and switch on me. I assure you it wasn't intentional. I, I, I really should have been upfront about the price. I thought maybe you saw one of the flyers. Maybe I could do something for you. I know you'd like to help me if you could. Yeah, I hope so. That reminds me of a joke I heard the other day. Dot, dot, dot. They don't even bother to put the joke. You know what? I may be starting to like you. Ah, come on. Tell you what. I like you. This one's on the house, but if you enjoy the tour, I'd really appreciate if you'd tell all your friends about me when it's done. So let's get this show on the road, eh? All right. All right. So this is New Homestead's main Boy, concourse. This underground area here. didn't exist when the original outpost, Titan Did Astro you know the Base, museum here was is finished in 2130. Old Earth artifacts? Oh my God. God. We'll come here. back here by the end of the Everyone tour and visit, talk about the museum collection. Be quiet! But come on, first, I'm trying to let's go see where people live. Yeah. Now okay. remember, these people aren't actors. They actually live here, so try to be respectful of that. While the original inhabitants of the Titan Astro Base lived in pods like you saw up above, they transitioned down here when this section of the base was finished in 2144. Space is extremely limited, so you'll notice some overflow here, but more residences also exist on lower levels, which are inaccessible to tours. I'll stop at each of our destinations if you want to look around, or if you have any questions for me. Okay. I guess we can look around. Well, we already went to the clinic. Do you have a spaceship? Storage I want over to here. Spaceship, but I'm older. They're so cool. All these Adriana tourists Brasilia. are able to come and go as they please. I wish I had that kind of money. Oh, you, you don't really want to talk to me. I'm just a nobody from the crates. 
Besides, I'm not really good at talking to tourists about New Homestead. If you're really interested in our history, talk to Maurice. He's a lot better at that than I am. Well, um... I'd love to talk with you, really. You do? I mean, sure. I don't know what I can tell you, but if you want to talk, I don't have anything else I need to do right now. How do you feel about your home being a tourist destination? It's not as bad as you'd think. I like talking to off-worlders, especially people my age. It gives me ideas for what I want to do when I'm done with school. Because, honestly, I'm not sure I want to stay here. It'll always be my home, but as soon as I can afford to, I'd love to explore my options. What do you do here in New Homestead? Well, I'm trying to finish up my undergrad schooling, actually. I want to be a physicist like my grandmother. Then, who knows what. But I also do some odd jobs here or there for money. Sometimes I help Jay out at his shop and he gives me stuff in return. Sometimes I help Anya clean up at the brown horse when she's short-staffed. That sort of thing. You mentioned something about the crates. What's that? The crates are what we call the living quarters for the poor people. Like me. Oh, wow. They're made from old shipping containers. We have to make do with the space we have here. They're comfortable enough, I guess. And no one on Titan is well off to begin with. But you can tell that people look down on us. Especially some of the tourists. Really? So you're having trouble with your studies? Okay, well, no. Not the studies specifically. Like, I get good grades when I'm able to apply myself. But... I'm poor. I just don't have the kind of money to be a full-time student and support myself. Even living in the cheap-ass crates. I keep having to take odd jobs just to put food on my plate. And when I do, my grades suffer. I just feel like I'll be stuck in a rut forever. Oh, we could give her 20,000? Oh my god, really? Uh, I don't want to give her 20,000. Maybe she can become like a, <clears throat> a crew member later, but that's a really expensive crew member. All right, we can give her 20,000 freaking credits and say consider this a scholarship. What? Really? I, I don't know what to say. This is beyond kind of you. I mean, I don't even know you, but wow, thank you. I did not have the opportunity for a formal education of that kind, but I recognize its value. You are good to assist her. That is all. Very well. Some say New Homestead is a backwoods world. Maybe it is, but that doesn't really bother me. That's it. See you around, maybe. Maybe. Like, I hope I, I hope I get a payoff for that somehow. All right, so these are the crates, the slums of Titan. If you need medical attention, see Dr. Lakota. But a word of warning, she really doesn't care for tourists. Yeah, we figured that out. Well, that was Those folks in Sidonia may be closer to Earth. But we do a better job preserving its traditions. Okay, these are the crates. I mean, they don't house a lot of people. I see maybe three or four homes here. The Pickwick Papers. Okay, let's continue the tour. Have any questions so far? How many people live here? I'm not sure the exact count, but New Homestead is a fairly small colony. 
What you see is what you get for the most part, except for some other people who live in the private lower levels. Some, particularly security, and yours truly, even commute from other worlds. So he doesn't even live here. He runs the tour of this place, but he doesn't even live here. Can you tell me more about how people lived before this was all built? The original Titan Astro Base had more habitation pods on the surface connected to some of the old structures you may have seen in the back. As the colony grew, the base was expanded underground, and those hab units were recycled into materials used down here. The overflow area looks cramped. What's with that? Sadly, it's difficult to get additional construction done inside these underground caverns. So for now, additional populations are housed in these stacks of old shipping crates. As you might expect, this is where some of the less wealthy can afford to live. It's not glamorous, but they are functional and cozy. I think I'm ready for whatever's next. Alrighty. We'll be taking the residential elevator to the farm's area on the surface level. This way, please. Let's leave these good people alone for now and go check out the farms. Follow me up the elevator. <laughs> We've got suites over there. Are those the private luxuries uh, homes that we heard about? We'll explore them later. Oh, no, he just uh, went up there. All right, we'll explore them now. But let's keep it that way. Suite one, Fields of Everglass. We've read that. All right, the suites are marginally bigger than the uh, crates. Off-worlders always ask how I can live here. I wonder how they can live anywhere else. War of the Worlds. Letter to the school board. To whom it may concern, my daughter Sylvia is part of the UC Remote World Learning Program. In this month's study kit, she was assigned a book titled The Hills Cry Jemison. As I do all books assigned to her, I took to reading it first to judge suitability for my daughter. How do you get off giving her this garbage to read? Her assigned learning counselor tells us it's really about building friendships, learning to tolerate others' differences, and overcoming adversity. That's all fine and good. Those are important lessons, but I see it for what it is. Uh, for what it is, nothing but propaganda, promoting your planet. My daughter is a proud new homesteader, and I see to it she remains that way. I don't want her getting silly ideas in her head about picking up from her home and family and moving to your consumer wasteland of a world. Sylvie will not be reading this book. I want my daughter to learn, but if you keep sending her material that pushes her way away from me, I have, I'll have no choice but to homeschool her, which places a huge burden on my family due to our farming responsibilities. Please reconsider the reading material you send our way, Nathaniel Manila. Well, I think we know whose home this is. So I don't think these were the luxury accommodations. Lots of history here, if you're into that sort of thing. That we heard him talk about. I keep, uh... Thinking I'm gonna find a skeleton in one of these <laughs> bathroom stalls. From my fallout experience. Alright, there's the elevator. Is there anything else? I kind of want to try food from that chunks place. But my papa says... Just a Doesn't look like it. Okay, Bill Star Sap. New Homestead's farms are the beating heart of the colony. Without them, the original outpost would have shriveled and died. These pods are sealed and climate controlled, a perfect environment for growing the hydroponic vegetation needed for survival in the early days of the colony. Papa, you're always talking about how important it is to preserve our traditions. But why do we have to farm? How is that part of our tradition? Well, we tend to farm here because we need to grow food. And that's what our ancestors did on Earth. 
But didn't they have big open fields and giant machines? We don't have any of that. She makes a good point, dear. Uh, it's because we have a much smaller space to work with. So then, it's not really the same, is it? Well, How really is it a tradition if it's not the same the thing as they do? And so then, why is it important that we preserve it? I don't know, it just is. Now, we don't want to fall behind on work, so let's get back to it, okay, kiddo? Okay, She's asking the fine. big questions, and he is no not disrespect, ready but I'd appreciate if you let me and my family be. How about you be quiet? I'm busy. Any questions about the farms? How is this different than anywhere else in the galaxy? Good question. It's largely the same, because this was the colony that pioneered the techniques you see elsewhere. But you'll notice that the farms here are smaller and staffed by humans, not robots. Things here are a little more old-fashioned compared to some of the large factory farms you'll find elsewhere in the settled systems. What do they grow here? These days, it's a mix of what you find elsewhere in the galaxy, but in the olden days, it was all brought over from Earth. It was a lot of hearty root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, beets, and such, supplemented with corn, peas, green beans, soy, etc., which didn't always grow as well. Are the farms still operational? Oh, they are indeed. Colonists still cultivate plant-based food for their own consumption here in New Homestead. It's less vital to their survival these days as they also import supplemental food from other colonies, including meats, dairy, and synthetics. However, most citizens here take pride in a new homestead-grown sustainable diet. Right, I'm ready to move on. Onward it is! <laughs> we'll be stopping by the Brown Horse Tavern later in the tour, which uses many of these locally sourced ingredients in their cooking. Hooray! But for now, it's just a short way to our next stop. Follow me! <laughs> so, the old bio labs are just on the other side of this building, believe it or not. We'll step on through the hallway there. They're not in use anymore, but the colony has faithfully recreated them as a historical exhibit, true to the original purpose of the Titan Astro Base. Sadly, they're undergoing some light renovation. Otherwise, there'd be interactive activities for kids to learn about how they used to search for microbial life here. Secure access, hey. Huh. Would we otherwise get at... We probably wouldn't otherwise be able to go in there. Before we talk to him, let's see what's down there. So that's the way we came from. What's this? That goes out to New Homestead proper, I guess. Back outside to a loading bay. All right, let's see what's behind the secure doors. Pardon the dust, but I can still answer some questions about the old Titan Astrobase Biolabs. You keep mentioning the, ti uh, the Titan Astro Base. What is that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot to mention that. That's what this place was originally called. When NASA divested its interest in the Astro Base and turned it over to the people back in 2185, they renamed it New Homestead and established it as a historical site. What kind of life did they find here? Funny you should ask. <laughs> Sadly, none. See, NASA <laughs> funded the Titan Astrobase project because conditions seemed ripe for primordial life to form in Titan's methane pools. They tested many different sites, performed deep core ice drilling and more, yet nothing turned up. So that was it. What did they use these labs for after no life was found? Well, NASA defunded the xenobiology program in 2132, but a scientist by the name of Catherine Neely proposed research into advanced colony building on inhospitable worlds. So, by 2135, work began on what would ultimately set us all up to create habitats anywhere humans dared to explore. These very labs housed the computer systems used in that research. That and general storage for the colony. Lots of storage. <laughs> I 
Uh, okay, I'm gonna take a closer look. Sure thing. Keep in mind, the Biolabs exhibit is closed for visitors, but I'll be waiting if you need a minute anyway. So we can't actually go into the Biolabs? I feel Hi like there. I'm missing something. Always nice to see a new face. Feel free to look around, but do not touch. That goes to the energy systems office. This is all storage, and that goes back outside. Okay, so that really is it. Well, what's next then? Pardon the dust, but... It's okay, we can keep moving. You got it, on to our next stop. Next, we'll be heading outside, so make sure to check those seals on your suit because it's a bit chilly out there. <laughs> We're going out into the frozen wastes of Titan to see what powers this planet. Watch your step outside, by the way. The ice can be slippery if you're not careful. The goal is to keep people out of Dr. Lakota's infirmary. <laughs> well, we've been doing our part there. Tell me he puts on a spacesuit. Come on, put on a spacesuit. No. He just steps right outside. Of course he does. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> oh, yes. Powering new homestead. As you might imagine, generating energy was a real challenge back in the day because the technology was much more crude then. But crude or not, it was that technology that sustained the old Astro Base. And it might surprise you to learn that the same technology is still working today. The interesting thing about this old colony is that it's mostly powered by clean, renewable energy. You'll see one of the methods used on the horizon up ahead. That's right, New Homestead's famous wind farms. This spot was chosen for the colony in part because of its constant winds. Whoa, what's all that These up in there? These turbines have been integral to the colony's function since its establishment as a cheap, mostly reliable source of electricity. What is that? Is that supposed to be there? Are those asteroids just floating in space? Okay, uh... Yeah, we got a lot of asteroids floating here. Supply liquid. Hang there, buddy. I'll be right back. I want to check out what's in this building. It's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. To me, it's just how we live. Garrett says, yes, you both are supposed to be suited. I don't know what's going on. All right. Well, I don't think we can actually enter this building. Or can we? No. We can't enter. Okay. Well, let's talk to Bill. So, let's talk about wind power, shall we? I didn't think Titan was all that windy. You're right. Most surface wind on Titan isn't too terribly strong, but here, the altitude and other conditions are perfect for sustained wind power. Like many worlds with atmosphere, the higher you go, the windier it gets. What's so interesting about wind power? Why is it part of the tour? You're looking at a piece of history! Sure, wind power is used throughout the galaxy, but these people were able to make do with it for hundreds of years! 
It's impressive! That was all they had back then, and still make it work to this day! Alt Grendel says chat has decided that Bill is a synth. I wouldn't put it past him. Do these turbines really power the entire colony? Mostly. <laughs> I I'm sure you've noticed the occasional brownouts. I guess these old machines have a habit of freezing up, what with all the ice out here. There's some methane on reserve for critical life support systems, but everything else here is otherwise powered by the units you see here. All right, time to move on. You're the boss. Let's go. Moving right along, we're going to learn about Titan's great natural resources. Titan is rich with hydrocarbons like methane and ethane. Surely you saw huge pools of this stuff on your descent into New Homestead. I like to think they add to the natural beauty of this world. Oh, of course, stay away from them because, like anything beautiful, they can be dangerous. Just like my last ex-wife's pet. <laughs> she had this gorgeous, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, creature. <laughs> the guy that sold it to her couldn't tell her what it was or where it was from. I don't think it was even a legal sell, to be honest. The thing was very easy on the eyes. Feathers, all the colors of the rainbow. Nasty bite, though. Wound up in the hospital and almost lost my hand. Still not enough for her to get rid of the dang thing. <laughs> anyway, there's a reason she's my ex-wife. <laughs> but enough about me. <laughs> we were talking about methane and other resources, right? Right, right. Focus, Bill. This has become less a tour of New Homestead and, uh... Mora, let's get to know Bill hey, adventure. Can you believe it? Back in the 20th century on Earth, they used to fight wars over natural resources like this and petroleum. They had this whole moon here, basically made of hydrocarbons in their own backyard. They just couldn't get to it. Incredible how far we've come. New Homestead is home to one of the oldest and largest methane processing plants in the settled systems. Wow, look at that. Every year, UC engineers go through a painstaking, month-long maintenance process. It's how this place has remained operational as long as it has. I'm not going to take you too close to the machinery, liability and all, but I can still answer questions. <laughs> okay. What exactly is going on over here? Why is there just a big deposit of junk sitting right out in the middle here? All right, let's make sure our spacesuit is on. I love this kind of stuff where they actually put thought into the infrastructure of a settlement and they build these in, these huge gas works. This is great. Big old methane tanks. Take vandalism seriously here. You don't mess with history. Wouldn't dream of it. Hey. Oh, man. Jam and Cohen says, mine the ice that's gathered around the windmills and see if they start spinning again. Whisperfire says, when I see something labeled methane, I think of farts. Toot toot. Oh, thank you for that one, Whisperfire. Okay, Jam and Cohen, uh, will do. I guess there's no one to talk to around here.
Looks like there's a building here we could enter. Let's go inside and see what's here first. Would be nice to get off world sometime. Lots of history here if you're into a blank computer. Okay, that sort of thing. Well, we got some workshops here, and storage. it's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. To me, Lots it's just how we live. I have a feeling this place is going to be used for a quest or something, because it looks really elaborate to just be nothing. Uh, just got a message. Looks like... Oh. Mine? Oh, dear. I think we're... We're getting a bit too deep here. We've discovered a mine. Looks like we'll find some quests that send us that way, but let's finish the tour. Hi there. Always nice seeing a new face. As I'm short on time today. And we you can't get do used everything. to the methane process and smell. Now he's got his spacesuit. Questions? Fire away! <laughs> How can they shut the plant down for maintenance if people rely on it to live? Yeah, it's not as if they shut down for a month. It's not shut down at all, actually. See, this place is built with redundant systems, so they can shut it down piece by piece and suffer only a reduction in throughput. During that time, the UC gets more of its resources from other places, allowing New Homestead to maintain what it needs. Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield, with her first super chat, says there's a quest for the ice removal. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll wait for that. Why do they... Uh, what do they do with all of this methane? Exports, mostly. Since this world is so methane rich and has the infrastructure for it, a lot of the UC's methane comes from Titan. Of course, new homesteaders use it themselves for everything from generating heat to turning it into breathable oxygen by a modern science! Modern science! Wait, how do they turn methane into oxygen? Oh, uh... No one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I, uh, hmm. uh... Something to do with methane-eating microbes, I believe? <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> Sorry! Some tour guide. Right, no more questions right now. Okie dokie, Artichokey. There oh will be God. time for more later anyway. <laughs> so, this next stop is a bit of an interesting one. I only recently made it part of the tour. Fun fact, it's also the only natural landmark on the tour. What we're about to see is a glacial spire we affectionately call Emir's Horn. This colis used to be named after a character in a popular fantasy novel, but it was changed a couple hundred years ago to avoid any potential litigation. <laughs> now, what's a colis, you might say? Colis derives from the Latin word for hill, and scientists only gave names to groups of hills on a planet's surface. So in reality, the term you hear more often is the plural, colis, with an E. You probably don't hear it very often where you're from, because it was usually a term reserved for unexplored planets, back when they didn't have the technology to describe what they were seeing firsthand. Because of that, the term is much more common in the Sol system, but you may still hear it occasionally in reference to uncharted worlds. This planet's full of them, though, and they like to preserve that history here. Okay, we saw this earlier. That's pretty cool. 
So here it is, Emir's horn. You're free to take a closer look if you like. We can pass a geology tech to say, uh, coal, coals are more like hills. Are you sure this isn't an ancient fumeric ice tower? How about that? You really know your stuff. Maybe you should be the one giving the tour. Ha! <laughs> I kid. I'm not sure. I heard someone say that before. Something about the worn down remains of an ancient volcano producing ice via steam? I don't know. It sounds like you understand this stuff better than I do. Jamin Cohen says, did you find Maurice Leon's journal yet? It's supposed to be in a settlement on Titan. It should give you a waypoint in, uh, for Hong Kong. I haven't found it yet, but we have met Maurice Leon, so I'll do my best to try and find his journal later. Emir, who's that? According to ancient Norse mythology, Emir was the first Jotun. A frost giant. In the legend, they were both male and female and gave birth to the progenitors of all giants from their armpits. Ymir even predated the Norse gods, who, as it turns out, killed Ymir to fashion the earth and all of humanity from the corpse. It's a fascinating story, and the horn here is a fitting tribute to it. I think I'm done. Excellent. On to the next stop, then. So, we're gonna head back inside, through the methane processing plant. Try not to touch anything on your way. We want to make sure to respect Dr. Lakota's wishes to be safer around here. Ah, that brings me to another point. You'll notice the people around here have last names related to where their families originated from on Earth as a way to remember the past. The museum curator, Maurice Leon, has more information about that if you're interested. You can find him inside the main concourse. Loves talking about him. You'll find most of the locals here are very friendly to tourists like yourself. Tourism is a major draw to this colony these days, and they respect that. Most of them are happy to talk at length about what they do here. Their rugged lifestyle is a point of pride for a lot of these folks. Okay, and so this brings us back here. This area we're walking through is the nerve center of the plant, where technicians keep an eye on the operation. Since methane production is such an important part of the colony's livelihood, it's important that the techs notice any issues and react to them quickly. Anyway, we're headed into the ice mines. It's a natural spring where water bubbles up from deep below, but due to the cold, it keeps freezing as it reaches the surface. Okay. Into the ice mines, I'm gonna have to do a hard save here, and we'll continue the tour when we come back next week. I'm sadly out of time. It's a shorter broadcast today, everybody. Sorry for that, but thank you all for coming. I'm gonna get hard to work on my new lore video for the weekend, so look forward to that. It's gonna be a fun one. Lots of combat, lots of exploration, lots of history. Well, a little bit of history between the Freestar Collective and the United Colonies. Um, have a wonderful rest of your Friday, everybody, and I look forward to sharing that video with you this weekend. Thanks again for coming, and I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.